1991, Jeffrey Keene and his wife Anna were antique hunting in Maryland when he felt drawn to pay a visit to a Civil War battlefield. I had never read a book on the Civil War or a magazine or anything. I'd seen a few of the Ken Burns series that came out on PBS and uh, was very impressed with them. The Battle of Antietam claimed the lives of more than 7,000 men in a single day of fighting. He said, let me go explore and you can sit in the car. And he disappeared on me. And never really discussed anything when he came back. I wandered over to uh, the sunken road alone. And all of a sudden I was struck with an anxiety reaction. I couldn't breathe. I started crying. I thought maybe I was having a heart attack. I didn't have any pain. Just a mass of different emotions all traveling through me. So uh, after a while, the, the feeling subsided a little bit. I can't tell you to this day whether I stood in this spot here for five minutes, ten minutes, or half an hour. But I know when uh, I got up out of the road, I felt like I had run a marathon. Went back to the car. I didn't tell my wife anything because I didn't want to disturb her. And how was I going to explain it to her? I, I didn't understand it myself. I think Jeffrey didn't talk about it because he didn't know how I would react. And I think he had to put it all together in his own mind. The first clue to what had happened would come 18 months later. At a friend's Halloween party, Jeffrey got a reading from a psychic. She asked me if I believed in reincarnation. And I said, yes. And she said, well, there's kind of a question mark there. And I explained to her about uh, down at the sunken road. And she's nodding her head and she's saying, yes, that's because you died there. You hung around for a long time. She said, uh, you were hovering over your body and you were very angry and you yelled, no. And I said, for some unknown reason, I just said to her, not yet. She says, yes, like not yet. Jeffrey was stunned, but he still had no idea what it all meant. So I just figured that was it. The soldier died, and on the way home, uh, my wife had asked me, she said, uh, what, what kind of soldier do you think you were? And I said, I, I have no idea. So the next day, I remembered the Civil War magazine. That revelation led him to a second clue. Back in 1991, Jeffrey had bought a Civil War magazine at Antietam, but he had never read it. As my eyes were skimming down the page, they caught a two-word quote, and it said, not yet. The same thing I'd said to the palm reader, and the hair stands up on the back of my neck. So now I read the, the story that tells about a, a John Gordon with the 6th Alabama. His men were in the, in the sunken road. The Union troops were getting closer. His men wanted to shoot. And he just told them, not yet. He kept yelling at them, not yet. Wait for the orders from the center. So I look at the photograph on the page next to the one I'm reading. And it says, uh, General John B. Gordon. And I looked at the face and uh, I know the face well. The facial resemblance between the two men was striking. Was it possible that Jeffrey Keene was the reincarnation of General Gordon? There was a period for a week or two where you start uh, maybe questioning your own sanity or you're, you're just imagining things. My initial reaction was I thought he was absolutely crazy. The whole idea of reincarnation is not something I'm familiar with, not a part of my belief system, not something what you would associate with your average firefighter. Put yourself in my place. There's two things you can do. Forget about it or look into it. Jeffrey kept looking and kept finding clues. I have markings on my face in three places where Gordon was wounded during the Civil War. He was hit under the left eye and it blew the right side of his face apart. Under the right lighting conditions, because these are subtle. Some people call them birthmarks. I don't remember having them from birth. While a dermatologist and a facial recognition expert determined that the two faces were not a total match, they did find similarities between Jeffrey and General Gordon. When you overlay these pictures, it does appear that these two gentlemen have similar facial symmetry. 
profiles of people do not vary that much in size and shape to a certain degree. Many people can have the same type of profile. Well, the upper face as a whole, uh, which represents uh, the eyes and the nose, is uh, pretty high when we compare the photograph of Jeffrey King and General Gordon. I, d I don't worry too much about whether the people think that this happened to me. And as far as I'm concerned, it's proof to me. But just looking like somebody else doesn't mean you've been reincarnated. In addition to facial marks, Jeffrey has marks and scars on his arm and leg that also correspond to wounds suffered by Gordon. But most important to Jeffrey were a few significant coincidences linking his life with Gordon. When I started studying about Gordon, things from the past all through my life, I started coming across these parallels of things that had happened to me. One such experience came while reading the book Gordon had written about his experience at Antietam. I did read the portion on the sunken road and I was to find out that when I had that bad experience was the exact position of the 6th Alabama uh, which was John Gordon's unit. Perhaps the most convincing piece of evidence came with a parallel experience that happened the night Jeffrey turned 30. An experience he'd never been able to explain until he learned about the day General Gordon was wounded at Antietam. I was in the fire department at that time, went to the VFW with my brother and some of the other firefighters. At 12 o'clock at night, it became September 9th, my 30th birthday. And when we were leaving, I got such a horrendous pain in my jaw and down into my neck and everything that uh, uh, I told my brother to get me to the hospital. I did EKGs, all kinds of tests, blood pressure, this, that. After a few hours, the pain subsided, went away. That was it. We obtained records from Jeffrey's visit to Norwalk Hospital on September 9th, 1977. And the doctor's report confirmed Jeffrey's story. Gordon was born in, in uh, 1832. The Battle of Antietam was fought in 1862. He was 30 years old when he was shot through the face. So here I ended up in the hospital on my 30th birthday with pains that mimicked the worst wound that Gordon, Gordon received at Antietam when he was 30 years old. For Jeffrey, it was the final proof that he had been General John B. Gordon in a previous life. 